much, Karen, for making some time today. Greatly appreciate it. Really looking forward to learning so much about what you got out of the financial fitness program. But first, can you tell me something about yourself? Give me a, a bit of background. Well, I'm married. We have three children. Um, all of them are grown up now. Um, my background is in early childhood education. What else do you want to know? <laughs> yeah. So um, you're currently working in early childhood education? No, I am currently working in research. And okay. you're locate, where are you located? Brisbane, Brisbane. as far as um, living goes. Yeah, yeah, no, awesome. Because, yeah, we'll have so many people joining from all over Australia and it'll be really good to, to have context. So thank you for that. And um, I just have three really simple questions that we'll be working through today. And the, the first one is what, what did you learn from the financial fitness? What was something in that that was a big takeaway for you? Um, it doesn't matter how much money you earn it matters what you do with it yeah and so around that it's um applying the principles one of the things that i understand is that it's being a good steward of that money definitely yeah. definitely and have you found that that money becomes more attractive like it becomes more blessed in your life Yes, I think it changes your focus, but you're not focused on the lack of it, which was definitely before financial fitness. Because you're changing your habits and, and really changing the way you think about money, even though in some ways you argue with yourself and so that it doesn't, it doesn't logically make sense to do that, there's... There's something really extremely powerful psychologically about um, how money works when you use the program the way you're meant to use the program. Yep. And I think it's that psychological change um, that attracts more blessing into your life. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because I know that... Um, in our program, we have a lot about, about tidings and about offerings. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Have you found that giving um, of money has brought blessings into your life? Yes, definitely. Um, I find that when we are tithing um, and giving on top of tithing, um, the focus is not on ourselves. The focus is also not on, um, on our own needs. The focus is instead placed on others. And because you change your focus, your energy is different and um, your outlook is different. And so consequently what happens is this great joy that you're experiencing giving to others um, and there's great joy in focusing on others rather than focusing on yourself. And the serendipities of that are that because you're not focusing on yourself somehow miraculously, if you want to use that word, um, other things seem to fall in place because you're not fixating on a sense of lack. Yep, yep, absolutely, absolutely. Because I know for me I found that having the abundance and changing my focus onto what I don't have, onto what I can do, made mm. a massive difference on how I felt about the money and yeah, how I represented that money out into the world, doing good things. Mm, definitely. That, that was definitely a big challenge I had. How can I give from a bucket, as my husband would always say, that's already empty? How can I give from a bucket? that there's nothing in the bucket and I had to look at my bucket. Well, there's actually money in there. It's just going to different things. So how yeah. can I rework those things so that I can give? And I, and I think too, giving from the top instead of giving from what you have left, because if you give from the top, um, 
we always manage to work out a way of making what is left work. But when you give from what is left, well, there's nothing left. If we're honest with ourselves, we, we spend it all. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And yeah, it makes a massive difference out in the world. I know a lot of the governments and the, the spending, you know, the stimulus packages that are there to help economies. But if we were just giving straight from the top, as you were saying, from money that we had allotted aside, that's enough stimulus package for all of our communities to be able to weather any storms. Mm. So, yeah, I love it. Great. And then um, what would you recommend to people? So what was the takeaway out of all of the 47 principles um, when you've gone through them all? What was a big takeaway that you would recommend to other people starting the program? Pay yourself first. <laughs> it's and always it's the thing. hardest, isn't it? <laughs> because you can rationalise and go, oh, but I can pay this bill off quicker and that'll save me interest. And But you don't because you don't. And I've had this discussion with my um, youngest daughter who has partially done some of the, like the teenage version of the program, and uh, she wanted to take it out of her savings account. And I said to her, but you're saving for a specific reason. And I said, it's the principle of the matter. I said, you know, that once you touch that, that pay yourself first money, it's very hard to put it back. Definitely. Um, and, but it's much easier to discipline yourself to, to, to make all the other things work after you've paid yourself. Yeah, absolutely. We can, and I know for in our family, we can always find a way to pay other bills because we're highly motivated. But I could, I was really struggling with paying myself first. But all of mm. these other people are calling me and they're screaming at me and they need this money. And the value that I had on me wasn't there. So when it came to pay yourself first, it's like, but these other people, and yet, I was always able to pay them because I was highly motivated because they were yelling at me. So increasing that income, making it, making it and finding a way of creative solutions. My, my husband has found money on the street. He's found collecting cans. We've found incredible ways to make it work. And some of them are very much not glamorous at all but it was what we needed to do to get through that rough spot, to get through that to the other side. And when we're on the other side, we don't have to do those horrible things anymore. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. that's good. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Is there anything you'd like to add to anybody, any, um, to any of the, the conversations? What would you like to say to our viewers out there? Don't argue with the book. Seriously, <laughs> don't argue with the book. It works. Um, you can argue with the book when you're out of debt. But until you're out of debt and until you have, until you're in the financial position you're in, um, I would say just do what they say because in all honesty, every time I argued with the book, I went backwards financially. And every time I swallowed my pride and admitted that I really didn't know what I was doing because if I did, I would not be in this situation. Um, so when I accepted that they were right and it's a psychological thing, it really is a psychological thing. When you see that money growing in your account, that is just such an incredible feeling. When you pay off debts, that is such an emotional experience. And when you give out of your abundance out of, instead of out of what is left over, that is such a fulfilling and rewarding experience. And the opportunities that then open themselves up to you, to your family, things that you would never have been able to consider doing before because you hadn't disciplined yourself financially or you didn't know how to discipline yourself financially. 
this will give you all the right information and all the right tools to do it. And and I love the fact that they encourage you to revisit it because let's face it, when you pay off a debt, you need to set a new financial goal. Mm. You know, when you achieve something, then you set a new a new goal. And because if we don't, we then tend to go backwards. Um, so I just like um, the fact that we are encouraged to revisit it um, every so often. And every time our financial situation changes or every time we meet a financial goal, we revisit it because we need to reset those and yep, look definitely. at where we're going now. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I love it with the mentoring and hindsight's always a great thing. After you've learnt the principles and then you can apply it easily, but going through it, I know for me, I was like, that doesn't make any logical sense. Why would I want to do that principle? But that's just difficult and it's uncomfortable and I and I don't want to do it. <laughs> but you're exactly right. When you look at it backwards, you go, oh, of course, that made all the difference. It does make all the difference. And probably the only other thing I would say is it's not just the the mentoring and all of that, although that is really, really incredibly helpful. It's all the other things too, like um, that 10% account that they recommend in the book. In times like now, in times in great uncertainty, in times when you lose work for either health reasons or COVID reasons, knowing that we have a 10% account, which I actually had forgotten about that we have because you just... <laughs> this is a great feeling. Um, it is so good. And so for us personally, with Bill having some health issues just recently, knowing that we have that 10% account, we don't have to worry. Like we don't have the worry of finances in the same way that we would have had if we didn't have it. Definitely, yeah. I was talking with Kevin, my husband, about it and I was saying, you know, that feeling when you go, oh, we have this massive bill, how are we going to pay it? And he said, I love that I have the accounts put aside so we can just go and get it. And I said, yes, it's that second second after the shock of, oh, wow, look how big this bill is. The second second when you say, oh, but I've got it covered, which is so cool. I've spent so many nights away thinking, how am I going to find this money? Where is it going to come from? How am I going to make it miraculously appear that I need it right now? If I've already got it planned aside and made sure that we've put it in place with the targeted savings and the 10% and making sure we're implementing those, even if that compounding just is $5, but that compounding coming in every week, every month, it builds and builds and builds. So when you do have those times for those bills, you know that you've got a backup plan, which is so important. Yeah, it's very important. It's so <laughs> relieving, actually. Yeah. Lovely. Well, thank you very much for your time, Karen. Greatly appreciate it. I'm sure all of our viewers will love hearing from you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Sarah.